Whole life insurance and qualified plans, a 401k or, or an IRA might be an example. So we often get the question or mindset from someone that it's one versus the other. Hey, whole life insurance is better than a 401k because of this. Or a, 401k, or a 401k is way better than any whole life insurance policy because of these million reasons. And I kind of look at it and say, well, <laughs> there's pros and cons to everything. Rather than just say one approach is the end all be all, how can you use different assets in conjunction with each other? Why fight each other and say, okay, let's just take one approach. No, everything has a purpose. It's understanding what products and strategies and plans work for you in your particular situation. And then if it's one is the end all be all, go with it. If there's a way to mesh it, mesh it and see how you can enhance your situation. So what we're gonna do is just go through some of the bullet points here. Main differences. Uh, so with a cash value life insurance policy, to start off, when we actually fund the policy, when I pay money into it, dollars I pay into a whole life insurance policy are after tax dollars, meaning I cannot deduct my payment. So if I'm paying $10,000 in, that is $10,000 of after tax money. I've already paid income tax on it. I cannot deduct it like I can with a 401k or an IRA. If I pay in $10,000 into a 401, I can often deduct that from my taxable income. That means I'm not going to be taxed on that 10,000 for that particular year. I'm postponing the tax. Now the growth on both products is technically tax deferred. A qualified plan grows tax deferred. Eventually, I can't access the money. I'm going to have to pay taxes when I pull it out. With a cash value life insurance policy, you may have heard that it grows tax-free and you can access it tax-free. There is truth to that. If I do everything properly, don't trigger a Mac, I access it properly, I don't just withdraw everything. Yes, I can access it tax-free, but from, call it a compliance standpoint, Technically, the cash value does grow tax deferred. Now, here's a big one on the yields. A cash value life insurance policy. We hear a million different things. You can do seven to eight percent. When you look at actual data, not projections, not hypotheticals, not if you're look, looking at some indexed policy that it could produce X amount of returns, what's actually what's actually happened over time. What we've seen, and you know, my big thing, policy design, big four, all that good stuff, we've seen in that three to 6% yield. Now, this is a safe, liquid, tax-free yield, which is nice, and a life insurance policy is considered a fixed savings asset, meaning if the market does very well and the economy does very well, like, from 2010 to 2020, policies produce three to 6%. If the market tanks, like 2008, like 2020 with the virus outbreak and however things slowed down as a result, policies still produce between three to 6%. Safe place to position money, I know it's going to continue to do what it's going to do. Now on the other side, the qualified plan we have a question mark there because I have a whole lot of options. I can invest it directly in the market. Maybe I select certain mutual funds, whatever it might be. If I have my funds tied to the market and the market does well, well, I can make a lot of money. If it doesn't do that well, I can lose money. I can also tie it to a fixed asset. I could even, in some instances, own a cash value life insurance policy within a qualified plan, that's possible as well. We don't always recommend it, but it is something I can do if I like that fixed asset return. But the yield, big question mark, because we've got options. Now, when it comes to accessing the money, huge attraction point or huge draw to cash value life insurance is if we do everything properly, I can access that cash value 100% tax-free assuming I don't mech, don't lapse it, any of that good stuff. With a 401k on the other hand, because I've paid money in with pre-tax dollars, so if I paid $10,000 in, that was 10k I paid zero tax on. 
and then it grows over time as well. When I eventually pull money from a 401k, I have to pay ordinary income tax and potential, potential penalties, 10% penalties, if I'm under the age of 59 and a half. Now, there are times where things happen. For example, the $2 million stimulus plan that was released after the uh, virus scare does allow, or did allow for, I believe it was a three year period where individuals can access funds from their 401k without penalty. Income tax, of course, would still be due. However, I do have access to the funds without that additional 10% penalty. So there are rules around 401ks. Main point is I have to pay the full income tax as income, it's added to my income for whatever, for whatever I'm earning that, that year, whereas a life insurance policy is not. But again, the more I know, the more knowledge I have, the better decisions and moves I can make. And then when it comes to the loan provision, with a life insurance policy, and this ties to IBC understanding how I can actually use the money within a cash value life insurance policy, is there's no, law, no lost opportunity cost. Once a dollar passes through a policy, regardless if I let that dollar sit and grow and earn, call it 5%, or if I decide to pull it out, if I loan against it, I continue to earn that 5% on any money in cash value and any money I borrowed out. They collateralize my death benefit to do that. Whereas with a 401k, I do have a loan provision there. For the longest time, it was about 50,000 that I could actually borrow out. Uh, they just bumped that up to 100,000. Now that might only be three years, depending on, on the st stimulus plan rules and how that all works out. But at the same time, a big difference between the loan features. We mentioned no lost opportunity cost here. With the 401k, if I pull out $50,000 or any amount of money, what happens is that money no longer earns interest. So if I was earning 8% in the market and I pull 50K from a 401k, there is a lost opportunity cost. However, the advantage is anything I pay back because I will be required to repay the loan on a 401k. So here I'm required to pay it back Whereas over with a cash value life insurance policy, I'm not required to pay it back unless I've loaned everything out, then I'll want to pay it back to make sure it doesn't lapse. But I've got flexibility over here. Here, I have to pay it back depending on the terms of the institution. Usually it's five years, but it's gonna vary depending on the company and such. Is if there's an interest rate associated with that repayment, let's say it is 3%. That 3% does not go to the institution, it goes back into your 401k. So it is, in a sense, like you're actually paying yourself back. Now, if the market's earning 8% or whatever asset you have it linked to, you're not earning that, you're getting the 3% 3 per, 3 instead, but is a nice feature, good to be aware of that. So is one better than the other? Not necessarily. I mean, a 401k, if you're in a high income tax bracket, that might help you defer some income, not kick you down a bracket or so in a particular year. That's a nice advantage to it. But at the same time, a cash value life insurance policy is liquid. I can use it for opportunities all along the way. So good to understand how both of them work. We can help with cash value life insurance. I cannot help with 401ks or qualified plans. We choose not to. Um, if you're interested in that side, we can certainly refer you, refer you to someone. If you're interested in this side, we can send you custom design policies anytime you'd like. Thank you. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.